Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I invite you to join us as we explore how machine-made marbles are produced here at the Dave's Appalachian Squirrels Marble Factory. We're here with Linda Moore Simmons in Hensboro, West Virginia. And we're doing a, a new DAS run, right? Yeah. What's the name of the run? Andy Davis Celebration Run from 95 and October. Andy Davis Celebration Run. Yeah. Cool. This is what we do. This is our striking glass. What do you call these? Striking glass. Striking glass. This is the bubble gum. Nugget. Uh-huh. And is this college for this one? Yes. Yeah. College for the run. Right. And this will be a one-day marble run lasting about nine consecutive hours. The base glass for this run will start out with an opaque white collet at first, and later a clear collet will be added every hour or so. We are using about 1,000 pounds of total glass cullet in this run. Because the world's watching. Hello, world. All right. <laughs> Making marbles. Yeah. It's exciting, huh? Yeah. Absolutely. Here's a view of the back end of the furnace. This tank is approximately 280 cubic square feet, and it's raised up high enough so that it's positioned above the business end of the marble machine. This tank is built with furnace brick or fire brick, which can handle extremely high temperatures. There's a slight pitch on the bottom of the inside of the tank, and as the base cullet is shoveled in through the back door, it begins to melt and it works its way downstream to where the orifice is located at the front. A steady stream of molten glass drains at the orifice where they get cut into glowing little glass slugs. Optimal marble making glass temperatures are approximately 2,500 scorching degrees Fahrenheit. Dave, hold on. How hot is it a year? It's, uh, it's kind of hot. 2,000 degrees in the tank. Right. 1,500 when they come. When oh, they're boy. Active. Our production estimation for this machine is roughly four marbles per second, which is about 240 marbles a minute. There are two cutting shears slicing back and forth here at a furious pace. And the size of the marbles is determined by the speed of the glass flow versus the speed of the cutting arm action. And these marbles are coming in at about a plump 21 30 seconds of an inch. The glass slugs are thrown into two tubes which direct them onto the forming screws. And the glass solidifies quickly here as they're shaped into round marbles by the rotating screws. And they continue down the track and they roll under some cooling fans and are met by our quality control crew at the sorting stations. The very first marbles out of the tank and down the run are referred to as tank wash marbles. And they're going to be undecorated plain Jane marbles that just show the base glass color. And then right away, detail specialist Jim Storsberg begins decorating the marbles with frit glass with specialized hand tools right at the rollers and a venturine lines right before the cutting shears at the orifice. So now we're getting some very cool marbles with a variety of surface decorations coming in. But how are the primary marble swirls produced? I haven't the foggiest idea. <laughs> okay, but seriously, the main swirl patterns that you see in the marbles are added directly into the furnace at swirl glass ports with different color combinations. Let's watch DAS owner and glass master Dave McCulloch as he demonstrates the process. So Dave's breaking down some premium collet here into bite-sized chunks. And he's prepared this collet combination here for this leg of the run. So he's got a bright pink, a yellowy Burmese glass, which is highly UV reactive, and a transparent red collet. Little black light, just another mini pass. You gotta light the place up. And the door goes open and in goes a few pounds of color, a few scoops of each color. So some scoops are positioned far across to the other side of the orifice and some are dropped right near the port. And this colored glass won't mix in with the base glass here like it might if you were working with paints. They'll melt down and create their own distinct stream and they'll work their way down into the orifice. If you look at this photo of the inside of the tank, you can see how stream channels begin to form in the tank floor. And this is where the glass is moving the quickest. 
And this is basically how separate swirls are created in some of your favorite marbles. All right, so let's check out how this color combination came out. Right. That's the Burmese flash. That's incredible. And how does it look without the black white? Oh, okay. Cool. So what happened to the yellowy Burmese? Well, it burned out into a creamy white color, but it glows a loud lime green under UV light, and the other colors stayed true. These gorgeous glowers were nicknamed Sarah Marbles by Linda Moore Simmons. They were named after her granddaughter. What? Oh. I, I, like, uh, I opened that hot. Thank you. Good God. That's just terrible. What do you call those? Those are called cranberry, base cranberries. Made them on 716. Oh wow, yeah, they're brand new. Run is just a run I just ran. Just, uh, you know, I was trying to cranberry base. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the cranberry come out, but, as you know, they're beautiful, but they stay dark. You know? Yeah. They stay dark. Man. That's absolutely stunning. What are you going to call them? Cranberry, just cranberry base. All right, cranberry base. Back at the sorting stations, there's still plenty of work to do. The damaged marbles are picked out and put into discard buckets, and some of the choice marbles are hand-selected to be later divided up between the investors at the end of the run. Still look for the lookers. Okay. If something catches your eye, yep. you go get it. Right? And that's the premium bucket. Right there. Right. That one right there stands out to me. That one right there. The marbles sit staged at the gates until they're all quickly looked over. And then they all get spilled into pails and they're kept covered with insulation. So it's to keep them from cooling too quickly and possibly getting annealing fractures. It's like I'm 10 years old again. Yeah, yeah. Picking out cherry, you're cherry picking marbles. <laughs> These marbles are still dangerously hot here and you can see how dull the colors appear in the sorting stage. It takes about 15 minutes for a scoop of swirl color pellet to melt down and join into the stream of glass. And it takes about another 24 hours for the glass to fully cool and cure to where the colors are bright and true. When each pail is filled, they get picked up and dumped into 65 gallon drums. And they'll cool there overnight. Actually, they rotate and they go around and they jump. And this is the man of the hour, Mr. Andy Davis. Andy and his brother Jim are well known for their outstanding contemporary handmade marbles. And Andy makes these wicked little spinning top sets out of the discard glass from David's Marble Runs. And here's one in action. Awesome. And this is a view of the support car base for the forming screw section of the machine. And you can see it's built on wheels that will roll like a little mini railroad train. And at the end of the run, the tracks pivot away and the base is rolled forward and away from the stream of glass. The orifice then gets plugged with a wooden dowel and the fuel is shut down. And the hot work stage is done and the pride of Pennsboro pauses to take a bath. The next morning, the investors return to roll out the drums and give the marbles another thorough mix. The drums are then emptied into packing boxes and are carefully weighed and put into numbered lots. The shareholders then draw numbers to claim their lots. This was an extended run yielding 60 20 pound boxes. A very rough estimate would be about 150,000 total marbles produced. And here are some close-up photos of some of the different marble styles for the run. 
And this is the fabulous signature Andy Davis marble. Some of the better examples had brilliant chunks of glittering gold LUTs. It's an instant classic. Well, I'd like to thank the entire cast of awesome characters for their help in this video. I hope you enjoyed the show. And as always, thank you for watching Vintage Machine Made Marbles.